The new trailer for Scarlet and Violet has just dropped and boy, did it give us a lot to think about. Between the new multiplayer mode, seeing our new rival for the first time, and getting to see the fact that we're going to get different professors depending on which game we choose for the first time ever. This game that has been described as an evolutionary step for the Pokemon franchise is really looking like it's shaping up to be exactly that. Also, Lechonk. I love Lechonk. What I'm most interested in today though is the legendaries that were revealed to us in Coridon and Miraidon. Their distinct appearances naturally contrast each other with Coridon's seeming more archaic as opposed to Miraidon's more futuristic and technological appearance. A similar difference that we see between both the professors in the game and even the logos themselves. It seems clear at this point that Pokemon Scarlet is shaping up to be a game very much based on the past and Pokemon Violet will have its eyes set on the future. Even when you break down the names of these legendary Pokemon, Koridon could draw its name from the Japanese word Korai, which translates to ancient, and the Mirai part of Miraidon means future. But what does this all mean? Will Scarlet take place in the past and Violet take place in the future? I don't think so. My main reason for doubting this is due to the fact that we've just been shown that co-op multiplayer is possible and seems to be able to be done between both players of Scarlet and Violet. You need only look at the uniforms of these four characters to recognize that. So with that being the case, unless we have access to time travel from the very beginning of the game, the likelihood of these two games taking place in two distinct time periods seems highly unlikely to me. However, I do believe these games will have some form of time travel in them. We're just not going to see it until we get the legendary Pokemon. It may spring up sporadically throughout the game, but we're not going to be able to do it at will until the legendary Pokemon are under our control. Much in the same way as Ultra Wormholes were prevalent all throughout Sun and Moon and their sequel games, but it wasn't until we had Lunala or Solgaleo that we could willingly go on an Ultra Warp Ride. So, with these two legendaries that are said to have power that surpasses other Pokémon, we could use them to ride either into the past or the future. It's still hilarious to me that Pokémon have drawn so much inspiration from motorbikes for these designs, but exploring why that's the case might have to wait for another video. Instead, let me suggest to you that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet will offer more variation than we have ever seen from the previous split titles. More so than a differing evil team, or a few game-specific Pokemon. Instead, I think each of these games will offer us something even bigger. A whole new region. Well, kind of. It will still be the same region, but in Pokemon Scarlet, we will have the chance to use Coridon to travel into the ancient times of that region. Think traveling to Hisui from Sinnoh. Then in Violet, we'll use Maridon to travel into the future of that region. What this would mean is that we could see a number of regional variants based on time periods, similar to how we saw extinct variants of Pokémon in Legends Arceus. We could be introduced to ancestor variants for many other Pokémon. And this would further help explain why we have already seen Hisui and Zoroark within the game, despite the fact that it was believed to be extinct. Or, and to me this is perhaps even more interesting, using Maridon, we could travel into the future and find descendant variants, where the Pokémon we already know have evolved further. As in, like, real-world evolution, not in-game evolution. I mean, don't worry about it. This concept is reflected once again by the professors. Sada has a primitive aesthetic to her fashion, especially when compared to Turo's futuristic bodysuit. Also, I believe it's important to note that their names draw from the Spanish translations of past and future. Pesada and Futuro. It is often the case with professors of Pokémon games that, hang on! Are these the first professors to not be named after trees? Huh. It's often the case with professors of Pokemon games that their research either revolves around the game's gimmick or the powers possessed by the legendary. Often both. So if Sada is looking to ancient history to further her research, and Turo looking deep into the future, it would make sense that with the power of the legendary Pokemon, they could actually explore these regions in time how much of this region will be explorable to us in these different time periods remains to be seen. But if this is truly the direction that Scarlet and Violet is going, then I for one can't wait. The idea of wandering amongst ancient Pokémon that we have only ever seen revived from fossils, or walking alongside Pokémon that defy our understanding of the term, similar to Ultra Beasts. It's just… there are no words. Over the last few generations we have explored space, the multiverse, and the near past. How much further will we be allowed to explore in this new open world adventure? Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any further speculations and theories for Scarlet and Violet. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment. 
ring the bell, do all the YouTube things, and I shall see you on the next episode.